which I can't do in this program. I have to do it in a different program, but it will be done. Okay, it will be done. This is the one that we just worked on. And this is pretty much what we're not going to be working on. We've already done that. Um, got something I want to show you. I've been looking for something for years because I knew it and I've been shouting it and screaming it and yelling it and saying to everybody and their grandmama, there is no money. Well, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I can prove to you that there is no money. Now, it's not just a little bit of proof. It's a whole lot of bit of proof. When I say a lot of bit of proof, I mean a lot of bit of proof. Now, what I'm doing right now is I'm just checking something in a document because I made a vow to myself that I ain't going to sleep until I get this thing done tonight. And I'm hoping I can keep that because, you know, better it is that you vow not than you vow and do not pay. So I did it to myself, okay? And you know how I keep my word? And I really, when I say I'm on fumes and I'm mentally exhausted, I promise you I'm mentally exhausted. But we got a couple of things we need to talk about. We're going to go here. Now, this one is the credit of the United States. Now, Congress does something that you all don't know about. So let's find out what Congress does. The authority which the Constitution confers in authorizing Congress to borrow money, pay attention to that phrase, to borrow money, the Constitution empowers the Congress to fix the amount to be borrowed and the terms of the payment. Now, by virtue of the power to borrow money on the credit of the United States, Congress is authorized to pledge that credit as assurance of payment as stipulated as the highest assurance the government can give its plighted faith ladies and gentlemen congress does not lend gold congress does not pay in gold congress since the 1930s this is a very famous case perry versus us since the 1930s has been dealing with credit. Do you know why they've been dealing with credit? Because they put a clause in the Constitution when it first was invented, the Constitution, they put a clause in one of them little clauses that said they get to, watch this, the conclusion was therefore reached that an investment of these funds in bonds of the United States was safe and a proper investment and did not violate the provisions of the Constitution as to their ultimate use. Speaking of the United States bonds, it was further said, the faith and credit of the United States is the foundation of all money values within its territories. Now you all may not understand this, so I want you to turn everything off and I want you to focus on what's being said. Because I promise you, I've been yelling and screaming this for years. I never had any proof until now. This is 1944. That the faith and credit of the United States is the foundation of all money values within its territories. This has been a credit-based system since 1933. Why? Why is it a credit-based system now? The faith and credit of the United States is the foundation of all money values in its territory. First, legal tender is not money. Money values, you see that? Legal tender is not money because it has no value. The sovereignty of the United States is in the people of the states. So the credit comes from the people, and it is this credit which Treasury borrows from. We'll talk about that in a second. The faith and credit of the United States is the foundation of all money values in its territory. You're going to find that there are quite a bit of cases that's going to repeat the same thing. A bill of credit. Have you guys known that you can do a bill of credit? Shh, don't tell nobody. Emanates from the sovereignty of the state. It rests on its currency on it 
rests for its currency on the faith of the state pledged by a public law. All of the monies that the United States deals with comes from the public. It is the public that the government borrows from. It is this borrowing, not your spending, but it is this borrowing that increases the public debt because they're borrowing off of your credit. Now, if you don't believe me, go ahead and look at the debt ceiling and look at how it goes up when Congress and the Treasury borrows and spends. I'm not making this up. I promise you, I'm not trying to create nothing. I am not trying to invent nothing. I've been saying this for years. Go back and listen. It's called Hyven the Credit Monster. 2011 video where I told all of you that the system was based on credit. He literally says it that way. Okay, Hyven the Credit Monster. That video is very hard to find. <laughs> Sorry, it is very hard to find, but it's called Hyven the Credit Monster. And he talks about the whole system. And you know, my the characters that I created in certain videos, those are real to me. So Hyven the Credit Monster tells you about the whole credit-based system. Pay attention. The faith of the United States is solemnly pledged to the payment of deposits with accrued interest. Now, how can you pay interest on nothing? The word of the United States is, excuse me, was pledged. Their word. They gave their word. That's their credit, ladies and gentlemen. Just as you give your word, that was your credit. All bills, pay attention, of credit admitted, money's borrowed, and debts contracted by or under the authority of Congress before the Assembly of the United States in pursuance to the present Confederation, 2005, shall be deemed and considered as a charge against the United States for the payment and satisfaction whereof the said United States and the public faith are hereby solemnly pledged Full faith and credit is what they're operating off of. Ladies and gentlemen, that was 1991, 2005 case. The faith of the United States pledged to payment of deposits. So please understand, when Congress did that enactment of that clause, allowing it to pledge the credit of the United States, that was the problem. Okay? That caused the problem. So, ladies and gentlemen, you guys have been looking at it all wrong. I've been trying to yell it and scream it to you, but I haven't been successful. I've been trying to tell you that there is no money. So I'm putting together a document. Uh, I'm going to have to retitle it, but I'm putting together a document. The faith and credit of the United States is the foundation of all money values within its territory. Well, how do we know what the credit of the United States is? Who does the audit? Who evaluates it? The United States can't value their own faith and credit. <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay, well, my faith and credit is 18 quadzillion billion quadrillion dollars. Okay. If, if I get to judge how much I'm worth and what my value is, and I do get to do that, if I get to do that, who's to stop me from over-evaluating myself? So, who gets to determine what the full faith and credit of the United States is valued at? Well, they say Congress. Why? Because Congress, not, not the people, Congress, not the people, ladies and gentlemen, Congress wrote an act, a statute, which is not law. Do you all know that the only laws in the United States are the ones that the people vote on? Go back and look at the First Amendment. Congress shall make no law, which abrides the rights of the people. Congress are representatives of the people. They don't get to act on their own. They don't get to say, we're representatives of the public. They brought us here to do whatever necessary. No, you, that's not what the public said. 
The public said, look here, mother, you sit in office for as long as you do what we ask you to do. We are the majority. We put you in office. That's what Congress is there to do. That's why they were put in office. Now, this document goes ahead and explains a little bit about the public debt. And after it explains about the public debt, it goes into giving you case law. It is financed entirely by the state, and any judgment rendered against it for payment of money must be paid by the state with monies appropriated by the legislature from its treasury for that purpose. In other words, from public funds. Public funds represent monies raised by operation of law, by taxation, for the support of government, and for the discharge of its obligations. Government pays its bill when you pay taxes. But it borrows against your paying taxes. It hedges its funding. Don't believe me. All you got to do is finish reading these case laws. It's quite a bit of case laws. See, we're way up here. Wait, let's see what page is this. That's four. That's seven. That's 11. That's 12. That's 13. 14 pages. Worth of nothing but laws talking about credit. Ladies and gentlemen, I could have put hundreds of laws up here, but there's no reason. Like I told you, it's been stated since the 1930s that the foundation of the money for the United States is its credit, its pledge, its giving its word. This is the so-called article, ladies and gentlemen. This is Article 12. All bills of credit admitted, monies borrowed, and debt contracted by or under the authority of Congress before the assembling of the United States, before the assembling of the United States, in pursuance of a present confederation, shall be deemed and considered as charged against the United States for the payment and satisfaction whereof the said United States and the public faith are hereby solemnly pledged. So let me tell you how these idiots have been misinterpreting this. Pay attention. All bills of credit emitted, monies borrowed and debts contracted by or under the authority of Congress before the assembling of the United States. Not now, at present, before the assembling of the United States. So this doesn't mean they get to do it now. This means they got to do it before the United States was assembled. There is no authority. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. When I see stuff like this, it is irritating. They're supposed to, statutory interpretation says, the statute says what it says. Before the assembling of the United States. You can't get any plainer than that. That's why it tells you, in pursuance to the present confederation. Present confederation. That's how long ago this was written, ladies and gentlemen. And they're still using it. This is 1991. They're still using it to this day. This is what Congress is operating off of. That they get to create bills of credit. Now, here's the thing. There is no law saying they're the only ones to, that get to create bills of credit. If Congress can create bills of credit, why aren't you paying your bills with bills of credit? You better start doing some research. That's what this one is all about. That's what I opened up this look. Private, I did private bills of credit. Watch this. Hold on. However, a claim for payment based on an extension of credit for a period exceeding a limit of blah, blah, blah. This doesn't give me private bills of credit. Why? Because they want to talk about what credit is, what credit is, and how credit is extended from banks. And But uh, 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 uh. if the power of the government to borrow and spend comes from the full faith and credit of the nation, and the sovereignty of the nation rests in the people, then the people have credit. I've been yelling it and screaming it from the very beginning. You have credit. Okay? Holding that Congress has the power of making the notes of the United States legal tender in payment of private debts, and that such power is not restricted by the fact that its exercise may affect the value of private contracts. Ladies and gentlemen, 1884 is when this decision was made. I want you all to pay attention. It says Congress has the power to make the notes. These were notes that were backed by gold. 
1884, it's backed by gold. It's not the same thing now because we know those notes are valueless. But here's the thing. It says, empowered by the Constitution to lay and collect taxes and to pay the debts and provide for the common defense and the general welfare of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, Congress was never given the authority to provide for the general welfare and the common defense of the United States. Go back and take a look. To, mo to promote the common defense and, I mean, for the common defense and to promote the general welfare and secure the blessings of liberty for ourselves and our prosperity. That's the preamble. The preamble did not authorize Congress to promote the general welfare. The people said that that's what they were there to do. Go back and listen. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, they were required to do that, not Congress. They never gave Congress that authority, but Congress writes a clause to the Constitution, an article to the Constitution, which is not part of the Constitution, but they say it is. Why do they say it is? Because they enact it. They enact it, not the people. The people don't vote on this stuff. Go back and take a look. And even if the people did vote on it, Congress is exceeding its authority just like the president exceeds its authority and the courts exceed their authority. Not because I said so. I'm not, I'm not the authority. It's not because I said so. Go back and look at the law. Now again, if the government can emit bills of credit, there was no law saying you can't emit a bill of credit. Learn what a bill of credit is first, people, before you start going out there and, I'm going to start doing bills of credit. Learn what a bill of credit is, ladies and gentlemen, before you start going out and making a fool out of yourself. Do you understand? We already know, pay attention, that there is no money. It's just credit. It's been credit since 1933. That's why they got rid of the gold standard so that they could create an economy based on credit. It's called a credit-based economy. And technically their credit is unlimited because they got the people. You guys don't even understand things. You, you really don't get it. Why do you think they're allowing immigrants to come into America? Why do you think they're opening up the border? Why do you think they're letting them come in and be a part of the system? To get on welfare. Now look, those of you who hate the fact that these people who are in a worse situation are coming to the United States and trying to make it better for themselves, F you. You heard me. Forget you. You are the most ignorant morons on this planet. That they can't go and make a better life for themselves. You say, well, why don't this and why don't that? Why don't you? Why don't you? Instead of judging them, why don't you? There are so many things that can be changed if you all would get off your lazy behinds and start doing your own research. We're going to put the documents up. I got to go ahead and shut this video down. It's at 19 minutes. Y'all have a good day. Yes, I'm tired. I got to go. Y'all take care. Goodbye.